Okay. Um, so welcome to our first uh, and probably several standard of work uh, onboarding training for the RAD first component. Please do mute your phone. I'm getting a lot of feedback. Um, right. So, uh, first slide. Or I guess second slide. All right. So the goal today is really just to give everyone an overview of the RAD um, onboarding training that, or onboarding SOW that was posted uh, on Monday, I believe it was. So this is the standard of work punch list uh, that everyone is going to be using for onboarding RAD component one properties. These are the former public housing properties. There will be future training opportunities, especially because obviously we've had some technical issues, but it's probably because of everyone teleworking. Um, but also just because this is this is just the first path to let everyone take a look at what's inside that SOW. Um, and hopefully we will be able to get lots of good questions and feedback from folks that we can use to do further trainings that are focused on what people are having issues with once they've started using the SOW. If you do have questions, your first point of contact should be your local RAD POC. Um, and RAD POCs, please be keeping track of the questions and feedback that you're getting from staff uh, and share that with myself and with Yvette Viviani so that we can use it for designing those future trainings. Okay, uh, next slide. I will kick it over to Will Lady to give you the awesome recap overview um, and also talk about the RAD coordination memo that uh, was sent out recently. Thanks, Libby. So this is Will Levy with the Office of Recapitalization. I'm just going to provide a few, a little bit of an overview of uh, of, of of the RAD process, just as this is hopefully just refresher. Um, starting there, so I've got this. Uh, I'm, on, I'm on slide three uh, with the RAD conversion process. Um, so so just quickly, in a nutshell, uh, though this takes uh, you know two years in, in practice uh, or more. Um, uh, a PHA starts uh, 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 converting a property through public housing to uh, to a Section 8 contract, either to PBRA or to project-based vouchers, uh, by submitting their RAD application, um, which is a very light uh, application. It's really just to get them started, uh, and within 60 days, HUD issues them a CHAP, a commitment to enter into a HAP contract. This CHAP... Uh, reserves the PHA's authority to convert under RAD because remember we have a, a cap currently at 455,000 units. So this is the, the the CHAP is their ticket to say, hey, but it, just in case we've exceeded that cap by the time they've they've uh, they've converted, they've got a a, a, a ticket to to to, to convert. Uh, the CHAP also very importantly tells the PHA what their rents are going to be um, at the point of conversion. And so that, uh, you know, what are the rents that are gonna be in the HAP contract? So that's the document that the PHA is um, uh, using for their own planning to determine whether or not they can um, uh, viably operate the property uh, for the long term once it's on a 20 year contract to, to, to take to lenders and investors um, uh, who will use those numbers for, for underwriting purposes. So uh, uh, then comes a long kind of due diligence period by the PHA where they're doing various uh, uh, local planning and, and uh, um, uh, uh, community and resident meetings. They are getting a capital needs assessment. They're taking care of environmental due diligence. They're putting together a financing uh, strategy if their property um, is going to undertake uh, any new financing. Uh, and when they've put that all together, uh, uh, before they submit that to us, before they submit their finan financing plan, we now require, just like FHA does, that they, ha that they first have a concept call with, uh, with HUD, uh, where we run through a checklist to see, are they 
uh, kind of sufficiently advanced and ready to actually uh, uh, submit a quality financing plan. Um, or concept calls and a new feature that was uh, uh, rolled out in the fall when we published revision for IFRS. And we've seen a much higher quality financing plans now as a result. This also, for your purposes, is a key moment because this is really when uh, uh, an asset manager needs to start to get engaged. And, and uh, uh, it takes off the onboarding process. But we'll first back to that. Okay, so then they submit their financing plan, usually within within 60 days or so of the concept call. Um, we take uh, 60 to 90 days or so to review that financing plan and uh, issue our approval of it through a RAD conversion commitment, the RCC, um, which uh, again memorializes our approval um, and the terms of, of that approval, right? That they're going to do a certain amount of work um, uh, that the, the, the uh, and, and other key features of the, of the conversion and the transaction. Generally then within 60 to 90 days of the RCC, uh, the property closes. That's when they uh, typically will uh, simultaneously um, uh, enter into the Section 8 HAB contract, release the public housing declaration of trust, and the, remove the units from, from the public housing inventory, uh, record the new RAD use agreements, and if any financing, uh, close on any, any of that financing. And then any rehab or construction uh, uh, in, in, ensues, and that could be just a few months. It could be minor, or it could or it could be more significant. It could be demolition, new construction, um, and so here was up to 24 months. So that's a just high level overview of our overall conversion process. And hopefully, this is an image you can come back to or think about as as you think about your when you're um, your engagement in the. Uh, in, in, in the property and in, in, in the new owner. Okay, I'll then now just switching gears a little bit, I'm going to talk just for two slides on uh, some of the key points that were in a memo issued uh, September 10th of last year titled Updated Coordination and Closing Processing Guidance for RAD First Component uh, uh, PBRA Conversions. Uh, so this memo uh, does a number of things outlining uh, the different roles and responsibilities between recap and asset management um, in the conversion process uh, and, and discusses some of those coordination uh, efforts, um, stuff that's been figured out as well as uh, a few items that are still uh, uh, that are still needed and are ongoing. So some of the key points uh, from that memo, first of all, as Libby said, um, uh, there are, it lists the asset management uh, field, uh, subject matter experts or points of contact. Those are in an attachment in that memo, but they're also on the resource desk where they, you know, when they will, in where they will inevitably be updated uh, as, uh, as, as, as staff may change. Um, they should be your first stop as, uh, as an account executive. Uh, if you have questions on a property that is converting or has converted, um, uh, uh, besides using the RAD Resource Desk itself for status updates or, or information, um, that SME is uh, sh should be your first uh, uh, first stop for for uh, additional questions. Second key point is of course emphasizing the importance of the RAD Resource Desk. Um, I think we've got trainings out there on how uh, um, uh, account executives can access the RAD Resource Desk and use an asset management module uh, that was created. It's not a module in order to perform asset management, but it's a module in which we uh, 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 transition relevant information to the account executive um, and is the, the repository for the relevant RAD transaction data. Um, uh, it's got key contact information, any of the transactional documents that you may need to, to, uh, to, to pull down for the project file, um, and it'll, it'll play the status of the conversion. Um, it's also where the account executive uploads uh, the, the approval of certain documents, like the management agreement and other things. Um, 
so that we know, so that Recap knows, yes, this is this property has done the essential things that it needs to do before entering into that HAP contract. Um, uh, so that's that's what we're using as our as our cue. We're we're, we're waiting for uh, account executives to tell us that those documents are, are all signed off on. Um, uh, and then the last thing, the RAD resource desk, very importantly, this is where assignments are made. This is uh, a lot of our work. We, we automate as much as, as we can. And so a lot of the messages, like when a new CHAP is issued, when a, when a financing plan is submitted, when an RCC is issued, when a closing has happened, occurs um, and is triggered by uh, 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 information on the resource desk. And messages at certain times are sent to uh, asset management field offices uh, based on the point of contact that is in the, the assignment that's listed on the RAD resource desk. So um, by default, the asset management division director is the uh, is, is made the uh, uh, assignee on any, any new chap that's going to convert to PBRA. Um, at this point, it's too early. Early when the chap is issued, it's really too early for for asset management to, to pay much attention to the conversion because it may not happen and it's not baked yet and it could be years away. Um, but but we already uh, load a name there, um, and uh, the asset management division director then, by the time of the concept call. Um, uh, uh, makes the assignment down to the branch chief, and the branch chief makes the assignment to to a, a, a specific a, account executive or a resolution specialist. Um, and so, if the name that's listed there is still the asset management division director, by the time we get to say, you know, the RCC, then they're the person who is who's going to get the notifications, uh, and 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 not the uh, and not the account executive. Um, so it's it's a, a very important field there. Um, okay, moving on to some additional key points. Uh, as I've mentioned, we've introduced a concept call where the PHA uh, fully, uh, where, they, where they're presenting to us their, their, their developed transaction. Um, as I've also mentioned, this is really the key point when an assignment uh, to, uh, to, to an account executive or a resolution specialist really has to occur. Um, uh, uh, in my view, it doesn't really have to happen much sooner than this because uh, there is not much that an, uh, an asset manager needs to do before someone. But uh, doing this call, understanding the, the basic scope of the transaction, and then beginning at this point some of the uh, steps to uh, onboard that project and that owner to the PBRA platform. This is really the this is really the the, the cue to do that. Um, so so the, the the concept call really helpful for us, but also I think a, a a really nice marker for asset management to understand this is when the engagement should begin. Okay, a couple last few uh, key points from this memo. Uh, it outlines some of the key responsibilities at closing. So. Uh, that last steps the, the uh, field funding specialist takes to assign the HAP contract number and how that number goes into the resource desk. Um, it uh, implements a delegation of uh, wh whereby RECAP now signs uh, the HAP contract. The, so, so they're not, they had been signed in the field and the field had generally said, well, we don't know anything about this. Why are we signing this? Um, and so we have Recap has taken this over, so these are now signed by our director, Tom Davis. Um, uh, and then uh, uh, it, it outlines the, the 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 various documents that the uh, field uh, would have uh, reviewed and approved before closing: the management cert, the management agreement, entity profile, and the, the fidelity bond. Uh, finally, the the last key point I want to highlight here in in this memo. Uh, is a discussion of post-closing. So uh, uh, very simply, anything in the RCC dealing, you know, that where, where it details the scope of work that the owner is going to complete uh, following the conversion, RECAP takes full responsibility for that. It's our responsibility to oversee that it happens, to approve any, any extensions, to remedy any defaults, 
um, uh, we certainly appreciate any information you become aware of uh, as you are uh, uh, closer to the ground and you might hear about things and you might want to let us know about things, but it is not your responsibility to oversee that rehab. That, uh, that, that, is, that is within our, uh, within our scope. Um, of course, uh, by definition, asset management is your responsibility. And that, um, uh, in many cases, that is happening uh, right away, or there, there's no work. And in many cases, um, yeah, I mean, while there's rehab going on, because there's both rehab occurring and people living there, and the property you're actually running. Um, uh, uh, the memo also importantly notes that the account executive would be taking the lead on any new financing or any new HUD consents, anything that the owner is asking for that 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 that, that requires by the HAP contract or the use agreement um, HUD to approve. Uh, the account executive or resolution specialist is taking the lead, and we're, we're, we're well aware that there are a number of things where. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the field is seeking some more guidance um, on, 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 on how to look at those. Um, and so we are working with asset management on, on developing some of that guidance. Okay, thank you for my long-winded uh, run through of only three slides. I will now hand over to Tamara to, to talk through uh, the, the bulk of the rest of this presentation. Hello, everybody. This is Tamara Torres from the Fort Worth Field Office in Asset Management. And thank you, Will, for giving us kind of the high level of what the memo covered. And now we're going to kind of go down a little deeper into the actual standard of work punch list. So some of the things will be repeated, but it's more to give you a sense of what are you responsible for and what is for informational purposes so that you know the project is moving forward. Okay, so we're going to start with slide seven. Uh, so part A, it, this is the part where the commitment to enter into the HAP contract award, the CHAP is issued, and it's issued by RECAP. We're going to refer to the CHAP now um, rather than the long name, uh, and that is done by RECAP. Once RECAP issues that CHAP, then the Office of RECAP will upload that into the RAD resource desk, and then within um, at the automated email will be sent out so that a point of contact, the point of contact, whoever it is assigned for that particular region, will receive that notification that the CHAP has been issued so that they can go ahead and assign a branch chief. And the branch chief can then go ahead and, and assign an account executive, usually within three days, so that then they can be the person again, the person identified in the transaction will be the ones receiving. So that initially will be the point of contact, then it will be the branch chief, and then uh, the account executive once they have been actually added to the RAD resource desk. We will follow that with a concept call, and the concept call then is once the AE and RS are invited to by the transaction manager. Um, with the PHA, they will have that, and that normally happens about 60 days prior to them submitting a financing plan. So that's kind of a sign that the transaction is moving forward, the CHAP has been issued, you have a concept call, you discuss what it is the transaction will be, whether it will be financing or not, um, and you'll move ahead through that. So again, um, the automated email will be notifying, um, and that usually takes from, uh, it's about, typically the concept call is about four to six months after the CHAP has been awarded. So it depends obviously on the transaction and the project and the PHA, how fast it's moving. So moving to um, page eight. Now this is more, um, uh, less involvement on your part, but it's more for to be aware that the transaction is moving forward. So when the CHAP is issued, then it is the PHA that will be in their process in putting their packets together. Um, that's their third party reports like the CNA, the environmental review, and securing any financing um, that will be needed to address the capital repairs and or improvement. Um, during that time, um, uh, the, again, you will be aware by the automatic email, but the Office of Recap really is not um, yet involved. Their PHA is working directly, and if should they need assistance, um, especially for the small PHAs, then uh, Recap has made available technical assistance uh, for them in order for them to have uh, to be able to put that packet together. 
Um, the BHA continues to work until they put together the financing plan and they will submit it to the Office of Recap. The requirements are more outlined in the RAD Notice H2019-09 or PIH 2019-23. Um, you'll have attachments to, to this PowerPoint that you will receive and you can look at, at those closely um, as the need arise. Uh, the regional office point of contact again, depending on who's on the RAD resource, will receive um, the information. Um, and is again just for information only. The funding specialist at this point in time also doesn't need to do anything, but she will be aware so that when the time comes, then a contract number will be requested. Uh, but at this stage, nothing else. It's just for informational purpose so that that to know that the RAD project is moving ahead. Moving on slide nine now, the part B, once submitting a financing plan for conversion. Um, what happens next is they prepare an affirmative fair housing marketing plan and it is submitted to the account executive. The account executive will process it as they normally do process any other. Uh, and now this might vary uh, somewhat depending on the region. You do what you normally would do with your fair housing marketing plans. Uh, but you can follow the standard of work at the manage, asset management SharePoint site. And then um, prior to that, I should say, once that is done, then the financing plan is submitted. They only accept the financing plans once they have received um, proof or documentation that the Fair Housing and Marketing Plan has in fact been submitted. Not approved, but submitted for review. So again, uh, another auto email will go to the contact whoever it is at that time, and letting them know the financing plan has been submitted. Um, so the financing plan basically tells all of us that they have moving ahead with the project and it is moving through um, to hopefully closing. Moving on to what do you do after that? So after you know that the financing plan has been su submitted and it's being reviewed by RECAP, then you will go ahead and move. Um, and this is where your work really begins, uh, more so. Now you get more involved um, and you send out a welcome letter. Um, a sample welcome letter has been um, sent out and it's also available for you guys to review it. I believe they're also gonna be available at the RAD resource desk, um, the information that we're covering today. Uh, and the welcome letter is basically to give them a broad understanding, to give the PHA, the stakeholder, a good understanding of what's expected of them, what they should be doing, and what um, items that will be needed in order for them as they continue the transition. I'm not gonna cover in detail that because you know many of those are needed first initially for your management certification process, and then the remaining documents are needed later on. So I'm gonna cover a little more of that as we go through the steps. So the welcome letter basically um, will give the information about registering for the HUD systems, um, telling them about, about web access secure systems, the WAS, and so that they can have access to tracks, apps, and EIB. As you know, it does take some time, so we encourage them to start moving ahead um, once um, they receive that welcome letter from you, the PHA can start working on that. Business partner registration, again, it must be completed. Um, as soon as possible online in the app system, uh, and that will prompt them to get, go ahead and get started to prevent delays in the future as we move ahead with the conversion. Um, the PHA will not be able to complete some of the steps on the welcome letter uh, until after closing, but we encourage them to do as many as possible so that they are not um, behind uh, when we actually do close the transaction. So the welcome letter will have attachments um, and with more details specifically for each system setup requirements so that they can follow through and refer to. So use the welcome letter as to when you communicate with them and refer them to it um, as it will help them to go through each of the steps. Um, the AE or RS should reference the tracks vouchering for RAD PHA conversions. Um, there's a standard of work that will be coming uh, regarding relating to any follow-up actions that need to be completed so that they can be once closing that they can be successful in submitting subsequent vouchers and its processing so moving to um, slide 12 um, and will did you want to cover this 
Yeah, I'll, I'll cover this quickly. And this is a lot of repeat, of course, but so then we, so then on a recap side, we issued the RTC after we have reviewed and approved the finding, financing plan. Um, uh, once uh, once we have issued the RCC, um, the we send it to the housing authority. Uh, it's it's to the housing authority to the new owner. Uh, it's it's uh, three signatures on it. HUD, the housing authority, and the new owner. Um, uh, can are signed. Generally, this happens within 30 days, um, and then that gets uh, uploaded to the research desk. Um, uh, uh, executive receives uh, a resolution specialist receives an email from the research desk. And the RCC has been issued again. So to make sure that you don't have to check them constantly to, to, to see the status, but that you're getting a little email tickler uh, just letting you know that, that things are progressing. Um, so again, once that RCC is issued, uh, 90, 90 days or so, 60 to 90 days uh, to, to closing. Um, uh, the RCC contains information about the project in terms of the conversion. Um, and there are some things on the RCC um, that may be relevant. And I think the, the most important among them is uh, the, the replacement reserve. Uh, uh, the the, the to the replacement reserve. Okay, I'll, I'll turn it back to Tamara for the next slide, and then I'll come back in a second. Okay, so okay, so we are talking about the closing um, on the funding specialist when they take over, the asset management takes over. So once we have received the confirmation that RCC has been issued, then um, the AE should be responsible for ensuring, even though there is an automatic email that the funding specialist uh, will get because the funding specialist is assigned by the branch chief prior, um, they should get an auto email, but at the same time, the AE should verify and make sure that the funding specialist already has uh, requested, assigned a HAP contract number and has uploaded it to the RAD resource desk. If you don't see it in the RAD resource desk, um, you wanna follow up with your funding specialist to avoid any delays um, prior to your um, proposing or your closing date that's coming probably fairly quickly. Um, you want to make sure and have that because sometimes it can take a little while. The funding, funding special will process. They have received instructions on how to do it uh, from the FOB in headquarters and they can follow and they go to the SharePoint and um, they have the specific how is that done and then they upload it. They're the only um, staff persons that actually have read and write access to the RAD a resource desk specifically to upload or to include the HAP contract number once it's issued. Um, so once um, they have a sign and a log number and it's uploaded into the RAD resource desk, then you have it and then you can share it with the transaction coordinator or the closing coordinator, depending on who you've been working with. Uh, Part C, slide 14, we continue with the RAD closing coordinator at that point in time, um, sends an, a hello to the PHAs and copies the AE or the RS. The purpose of the introductory hello email is to inform all the parties of all the requirements um, that they're going to need in order to have a successful closing. The closing coordinator will reiterate to the PH, PHA and the AE or RS um, to ensure that they have met all the requirements identified prior to ensure that the closing occurs as it's supposed to and on time. And then not all of us are rushing, rushing at the last minute to try to get it closed. So once um, the closing occurs, the PHA will upload the closing package to the RAT resource desk. Um, they will receive the AE or RS receives an automated email remind, oh, notifying them, I should say, that the closing package has been submitted by the PHA. Um, the receipt, um, it's an automatic, again, uh, for their informational purposes at this point in time that the closing packet has been uploaded. Um, and during this time, the closing coordinator will continue to work with OGC and other divisions in order to uh, finalize all of the RAD-related documents and approval. Uh, this process in itself can take 30 to 45 days. 
then we move ahead. So the AE and the RS reviews and approves the management documents at the same time, all of this prior to closing. So again, now you have provided all the information initially in the welcome letter. Um, you will probably touch bases with them. They know what they need to submit. So the PHA then submits a complete packet in order for you to have, in order for you to process your management agent certification. As you know, your 9839, your 9832, the executed and current property management agreement, uh, fidelity bond coverage, grievance policy, um, and ensuring on what staff will be paid out of the, um, the funds. Once you receive all of that and process, like you normally would process any other management cert, uh, then you can go ahead, once it's approved, go ahead and, and upload it to the RAD resource desk. Um, then um, at that point in time, the HAP contract will be reviewed and signed by the Office of Recap. So PHA then, um, slide 16, PHA is then um, instructed to proceed to close and the AE or RS is, receives an email um, from the closing coordinator notifying that the PHA has executed the HUD documents for the closing um, and provides instructions to the PHA for the post-closing requirements. Then this email from the closing coordinator lets the AE and R, uh, AEs or RS know that the recap has concluded its review, its approval, and that the RAD conversion has been signed and completed. The PHA then is responsible for ensuring that the recorded use agreement, release of that, and the counter signature of all documents as applicable. So that concludes um, the closing at that point, except for once they have the closing docket, within three days after the closing, the PHA is responsible for signing all of the documents, ensuring that everything is um, uploaded into the RAD resource desk, um, and then the closing coordinator then uploads the recorded and, and fully executed documents uh, listed below um, to the closing docket milestone page. And that can include or will include the HAP contract with any exhibits as appropriate, recorded use agreement, recorded release of declaration of trust, um, or in a consolidation certification, the RCC, and any amendments if applicable, um, and if um, delay conversion agreements, if, if that's applicable as well, as well. The closing date documents are recorded usually within one to three days after HUD signs, um, after all the signatures. So now moving, for, moving ahead to part D, the slide 18. And that is covering the project setup in HUD multifamily systems. And as you know, this is key and it's important not only for the servicing of the project for a long time to come, um, but it also helps us stay on track so that we can make sure that the conversion fully is successful and they can begin vouchering successful. So it's very important to have the creation of IRAMS records and tracks, locks, and icon set up. Um, the AE or RS emails the funding specialist to request the contract to be set up in ICON. This is a very important step. Then the AER or RS assist in ensuring that the record is created in IROMS and initiates the project setup. In LOCK, the AE or RS must provide the funding specialist with the following documents or information in order for him or her to continue the um, creation of this um, record. And that includes the executed HAP contracts, part one and two, the direct deposit form, the SF-1199A, the tax ID, the DUNS number of for owner participant, the SAMS registration, voided or canceled check. Please note that the owner TIN must be listed in a block A of the SF-1199A in order to not be kicked back. The RAT contract number must be listed in the block C of the, of the sf 1199 9A, and the DUNS number must be visible anywhere on the 1199A. Failure to register the DUNS number will delay the new project setup, so it's important. A county will kick it back if it doesn't have all that information in your SF-1199A. Moving to slide 19, the AE or RS are not required to have um, access to the line of credit control system or locks 
However, requesting access is helpful to allow the AEO or the RS to monitor the project setup for subsidy payment. Um, the owner must obtain the, the DUNS number, and we provide you the, the website for the Dun & Bradstreet. The DUN numbers must also be registered and reactivated annually. So if they began early enough and they actually got it up and running and registered, they need to re remember or add it to their system to remind it to, that they, it needs to be reactivated. If not, it will not be processed. Things will not, um, not be completed in a timely manner. Um, ensure that the owner participants also registered to business partner registration, HUD multifamily under their owner's TIN. This is key. We see that a lot that sometimes they use what they used to use prior, but now the entity is, uh, the project is under a different number, TIN number. So make sure that it is registered under the property's owner um, going forward for the transaction. So the project set up on, pay, on slide 20 is um, the AE and the RS input the project information into IRAMS, and these are all um, the key um, items that you need to do in IRAMS to complete your property attributes, which includes property name, address, building tabs, your property participant tabs, which includes your current owner, contact, current management agent, and uh, contact and management fees, building type and count, occupancy, client group, participant information, FAS indicator, owner fiscal year end date, distribution allowance, participant information such as management agent, use agreement information, reserve for replacement required button, and reserve for replacement monthly deposits amount. Remember that all RAD projects have a family client group, so make sure that that is identified. And also remember, ICON needs to be set up first so that the IRAM record can be created. Oh, it will not be generated if it is not in place. So moving to my last slide of the creating the project uh, records in Transactive. As you know, the RAD resource desk, we will keep, we'll keep the information there. Um, however, we don't know how long and how much information can hold, and it is not meant for a permanent record. It is meant for um, during the transition of conversion. So please ensure that you go and create the record in TransAxis and that you, the AE or RS, downloads fully executed recorded documents uh, listed below, and that includes from the closing docket milestone page in the RAD resource desk to ensure that they're the ones executed, not blank ones. Uh, we want to make sure that we download only those applicable that are fully executed documents, and that includes your HAP contract with exhibits, your recorded use agreement, recorded release or declaration of trust, um, the owner's consolidation certification, the RCC, and any amendments as applicable, and delay conversion agreements as well. Um, so that concludes um, the SOW and what the AE or RS is responsible in a RAD conversion. So I'm passing it back to you, Livy. Thank you so much to Tamara and to Will. Um, and to all of you for hanging us, hanging in there with us today, uh, apparently GoToMeeting is experiencing unprecedented levels of usage today uh, because everyone is teleworking. Um, but anyway, this is still, as I said before, just the, the first broad overview to walk everyone through the new SLW. We will have future training opportunities. And um, this broadcast was recorded, hopefully successfully, for anyone who was unable to attend live. If you um, if you have questions, please contact your local RAD POC. I am already getting some uh, questions and feedback from RAD POCs, which is great. We will use that to tailor future trainings and FAQs. And uh, please let us know how the how the new SW works for you guys. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.